speed or perfection. With an understanding of layer heights, the choice is yours. Hey gang, Tim here at Core Electronics and today we're diving into layer heights when resin 3D printing. To be clear, layer height is the thickness of each layer of cured material. This is in the Z axis. Layer thickness in 3D printing should not be confused with printing resolution. It's dependent on the resolution of the masking LCD screen. Any traditional resin 3D printer like this Creality one next to me will let you print with a layer height between 10 to 100 microns. Between these two limitations is where resin slicers most commonly default to slicing your models with a layer height of 50 microns. I will demonstrate how to alter the layer height in slicing software and make you aware of carry on effects that need to be accounted for whenever doing this. We're also going to dive into other methods to increase the speed of your resin printer. Allow me to properly introduce my small crew of Kirby's and other test pieces. These may look similar, but each were created using different layer heights which means you're gonna be able to see visually what the effects of altering this setting will do to your final models. All STL files can be found using the links in the description, just in case you wanna have a go printing them yourself. The original STL file is effectively a rectangular prism with a slight gradient on the top surface and a chamfer around the bottom edge for easy removal from the build platform. These have been printed directly onto the platform with no supports. The only meaningful final difference between these models is how accurately they represent this tiny slope using the layer height chosen. This tiny slope has a tiny gradient of 0.024. This layer effect is especially noticeable on very tiny details, angled edges, and curved edges. Layer height reveals itself as obvious steps when it tries to represent these angled and curved top surfaces. This is due to the fact that 3D printing creates three-dimensional objects through multiple stacked two-dimensional slices. By implementing a lower layer height, it will create a smoother step between each layer as the Z height between these two-dimensional slices will be smaller. Now, truthfully, this sloped test piece was created in CAD solely to put emphasis on the fact that printing in layers will almost always prevent absolutely perfect representation of CAD design, unless the created CAD design has ideal dimensions. So let's demonstrate models that a resin 3D printer would more likely attempt to create. From a distance, feel more than happy if you can't tell the difference between them, particularly between the 50 micron and the 10 micron model. It is only with bright light and a focused eye do the layer lines on these models reveal themselves. For models like this, it could be argued that a small layer height is not all that important, particularly when you consider that the 50 micron layer height model took around four hours to print, whereas the 10 micron took more than 24. But if you're printing smaller figurines, like 28 millimeter scale models, a low layer height is very valuable, as that will ensure that all the detail can be captured. There are times when altering layer height really makes a big difference and times when it doesn't. To alter layer heights in Lightsheet, you're gonna to need to click on the 3D printer button found at the top left of the window. This will open up the window showing the printers you have set up in Lightsheet. As you can see, I have the Creality LD002H printer set up and highlighted. At this point, click on the edit button. Once you press that button, you're gonna see the following window overlaying the printer and resin menus. This is where you can customize all kinds of values. Of most important to us and this guide is the layer thickness, which I have highlighted here. You can adjust which dimension is being measured by pressing on the millimeter sign here, which will reveal a drop down menu. This will let you work exclusively in microns. Otherwise, remember that there are a thousand microns in a single millimeter. Any integer value between 10 and 100 microns will work well with a good and correctly calibrated resin 3D printer. If ChutuBox is your preference, let me show you exactly what to do. To adjust the layer height in ChutuBox, you're gonna to wanna to do the following. Click on the big setting option found in the middle right of the screen. In the settings menu that pops up, navigate to the print tab. On this tab, you're gonna be able to adjust the layer height in millimeters. To make sure your resin 3D prints come out perfect, there's a couple of things to keep on top of whenever you're altering layer heights. In particular, layer exposure times. Optimal layer exposure time dynamically changes as layer heights are altered. To have the optimal value for bottom and normal layer exposure times, you're gonna to need to run some exposure test models. 
Also worth mentioning here is the guide Finding Optimal Layer Exposure Time for Perfect Resin Prints. Check in the description for a guide to learn how to find these values using models like these. When 3D printing a model, the bottom layers are the first few layers that are exposed to the UV light. If you print smaller layer heights, you will want more bottom layers. Just by being aware of this and accommodating for it, you won't end up with prints falling off the build platform. On screen now are my general bottom layer amounts that I have been using for this monochrome 3D printer and resin combo. In my experience, after the model has been removed from the build platform and washed, if you use a lower layer height, the final cure to finish the part is gonna take less time than with the same model which had a higher layer height. This is because each exposure of the thin layers adds up, resulting in a higher initial cure of the whole piece. Lower layer heights mean much more layers and much longer prints. This results in a higher chance of failure and puts more strain on the printer hardware as it needs to do significantly more work to create a single 3D print. So I've been focusing a lot on getting perfect STL model representation out of resin 3D printers. But if speed is your dream, then speed is what I'm gonna give you. If you've already maxed out your layer height on your particular resin 3D printer, then I have a tip. Lightshi Slicer provides the option to increase the motor speed, both the lifting and retracting speed, as well as another option to alter the Z axis height that the build platform raises to each time it pulls up a layer from the surface of the FEP sheet. The location of these settings are in the same menu location as the layer height settings. Tuning these, by increasing the stepper motor speed in both directions and lowering the maximum height of the raising build platform, you're gonna achieve speed nirvana. Now, if you push these settings too far, you won't get the printed layer to remove from the FEP or you're gonna cause the stepper motor to lose its position, both of which are gonna cause a print failure. Just keep that in mind and adjust each setting by small increments over a number of test prints. Use one millimeter increments for the lift distance and 10 millimeter per minute increments for the lift and retract speeds. Fundamentally, you now have the tools to decide whether you want the fastest print possible or if you want the most accurate representation of your design, speed or precision. We have learned that big geometric shapes don't require the highest level of detail that these awesome resin printers can produce. With my 3D printers working better, faster, and more accurately than ever, I hope I've provided you the details to do the exact same. If you need more information, pop me a message down in the comments section or at our Core Electronics forum. We are full-time makers and here to help. So until next time, stay cozy.